Hello and welcome to episode 28 of the Clax Women for Indie podcast. Now, if you've been listening to the First Minister's daily broadcasts, you'll know that there's no sign of lockdown ending anytime soon and we probably still haven't reached the peak of this infection yet. I just realised, looking at the calendar there, it's four weeks ago today that Lynn and I were through in Glasgow to take part in the daytime show on Indie Live Radio with Val and Marlene. Seems like a lifetime ago now. And that was the last time I left the, the village of Dollar where I live. Dollar's not a big place. There's only 3,000 people in it. We've got one co-op. I'm just going to give a shout out to the, the folk at our local co-op. And, and I'm sure local co-ops all over the country. I don't know if any of them, by any coincidence, might end up listening to this podcast. But if they do, I just want to say thank you guys, because we're sitting at home. You know, in some ways, it's not the worst punishment you could have getting to not have to do anything and all those jobs that you thought you might sometime get round to if only you had the time well now we've got the time so it could be worse but these guys are having to go in there and work just as normal and they're also they're coming into contact with everybody in the town brave guys and you know they're cheerful and they're helpful And I'm really conscious that they're minimum wage folks. And without them keeping those shelves stacked, we would be in dire straits. I think I'll email the co-op and just give them that feedback as well. Maybe if we all do that, maybe you'll get a bit of a a thank you, if not a bonus or a pay rise. That would be good. Okay, so four weeks ago on the 13th, Lynn and I were through at Indie Live Radio. Primarily, it was to have a bit of a chat about the Indie Slates project, which Lynn has been very, very much involved with. It was only four weeks ago. This is a time when our horizons were completely different to what they are now. But I think we have to hold on to the fact that we will get back to that. You know, normality or a form of normality will return. It may not be the same normal as we left, but we've still got a job to do here. It's a while now, Lynn, since I got into contact yep. with you about the about the the Yes Late program. I picked it up on um, from Twitter. In fact, it might even have been one of your tweets, uh, Fiona, that I kind of said, "Oh wow, look at that!" Tell us a bit about it. So, th- so there's there's a, a fairly large number of slates, and I, and I think the people who paint the slates are called. You, they call themselves slaters, was that well, right? I think you told me that, or maybe it's just you that calls them that. More, yeah, they don't know we call them slaters. Oh, no, no, OK, because no. it's a bit of a follow-on from the Yes Stones, yeah. isn't it? Well, so we, tell us more. We're all members of Yes Stones, and um, one lady, uh, Tina Wild, who lives down in, uh, down in Gretna, had suggested that the stones, I, you know, you can get fairly sizable stones, but there's only so much yeah. you can get on a stone. And people have started painting slates. To be honest, once you start doing it, if something is stationary, you will paint it with, with an independence <laughs> message. <laughs> so, but Tina had suggested, why don't we put a phrase together and get a collective of, of artists and get them all to do a letter to make this phrase up? So that, it just kind of it grew from there. There's now, I think we're nearly at 7,300 people on the, the oh, Yes Stones that's page. Amazing. That's and great. I isn't joined it? back in, I think, I think it was September 2018, because I had been doing these stones and giving them to my friends, and another friend said, You know, there's a page for this. And I went, Oh, it's there. Very good. So I joined <laughs> it, and at that time there was a few hundred. Now, as I say, there's over 7,000 of us. So. We kind of put feelers out to say, would people be interested in doing this? And we've got enough people. I think there's over 30 artists. Some people have done multiple slates. And what we've done is we've made the the phrase, yes, 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 independence for Scotland. And there's also kind of stoppers in between mm. each each word. Um, it's it's beautiful. So, I mean, when I saw it, I thought, wow, just look at that. It's absolutely stunning. So, yeah, every, everyone was beavering away... Um, at home, we we managed to gather them all together, and we took them down to Gretna on the third. The plan was we were going to go to the Friendship Cairn there because there's stones already. They just to display them, 
Is um, this at Gretna? At Gretna, yes. Uh, that was slightly disrupted because we were informed that the police had been round and they had been told that there was going to be a huge demonstration at the <laughs> Friendship Care. And, oh, my goodness. Uh, which wasn't the case. The police quickly realised that they'd been... Uh, yeah fed a few lines. Aye. Anyway, we met up. We decided that we wouldn't go to the Friendship Cairn because actually that was behind the huge hedge. So nobody was going to necessarily see it unless they were specifically going to the Friendship Cairn. So at the border, the, the traffic coming in, there's an yeah. embankment o actually opposite the Friendship Cairn. So we just laid out the slates there. When you've got them all together, it makes a kind of 12 foot by 5 foot ah, display. Yeah. That looks fun. Um, that must be fab. And they weigh about ten and a half stone. So it's a huge all the job to transport yeah. them yeah. and set them up. It is. We've got five big boxes um, with the sort of nine, ten slates in each wow. that wow. we take. So we've only taken them out once at the moment. And the plan is we can sort of take them on tour around the country. And maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. A bit like that's the, what a I. Bit like the tapestry that's what of Scotland. I read, yeah, yeah, that you were going to take them the, on that's tour. That's the, the plan that's to the do plan. that. Great. Uh, current climate things are yeah. slowing down a bit, but it's not going to stop us doing it. It might postpone how things happen. So we're looking at places where we can take them. And when we did it that first time, that gave us the experience of taking these slates and knowing what it entails, having to have boards to put them up on, the actual weight of the boxes, then keeping them safe. They're all kind of bubble wrapped. I've got a huge roll of bubble oh. wrap in my car. But I had the idea of, actually, I could photograph them all, shrink it down, and put them on coaster size. Oh, oh that... So I have recreated the whole slate display in miniature. Lynn has very kindly brought a present to myself and Marlene, the most beautiful <laughs> yes stone with thistles and seagulls, which is your trademark. Is that Seagull, right? Seagulls and, uh, sorry, gannets. Thistles and gannets. <laughs> oh, gannets. Three gannets. I always That's very on. appropriate yeah. for myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we're sitting here eating our all butter chocolate chip <laughs> shortbread <laughs> rounds. <laughs> hey, the last time, Fiona, you were here, you brought us that wonderful stone there uh, for the show Peace, Love and Scottish Independence. And then on the back about Indie Live Radio, you know, don't hate the media, be the media, I think That's it says right. in the back, doesn't it? So we've got that as a permanent fixture here in our yeah, office, I yeah. love that. It is, it's great yeah. actually. And so if we go, when you had the stones down at Gretna um, laid out, was that just near the bridge, the old bridge yeah. at Gretna? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a sign that says welcome to Scotland. That's right, we yeah. Just beside I know. that. I know. It was really good. And you just laid them out and then did you leave them for a while? Oh, or no, we stayed there with the, them, we were there yeah. for a couple of hours. Yeah. And we've taken a couple of our flags, put them up as well. So we've got a Yes Stones flag, there were salt tires, there was Yes flags. Um, <laughs> and it was really nice, actually, because a few it's locals a nice spot. came down and then just the traffic driving past, you were yeah. getting toots and waves yeah. from, you know, yeah. buses, lorries, I know, cars. I know, I know, I um, know. But it's it's a nice spot, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. really, really, it's really lovely. good. So it was there for maybe a couple of hours? We, we had it out for a couple of hours. The, the weather had been chucking down, stopped raining, so it was, it was quite kind to us. A few local people came along, uh, quite a few of the people, the artists that actually made them, if they, they could manage to come along, they came down too Great. to see it. Because it was yeah. nice. We had seen it all together in pictures. Tina uh, was very yeah. good every time yeah. we sent here I've done my Y or I've done my E and the joke was always can I have a P please you know? <laughs> <laughs> that takes me back to my youth <laughs> um, so we'd, we'd seen it all together like on the screen but actually seeing it all together yeah. in real life w w was really yeah. nice yeah. Um, but just as I say it's quite a, a, a sort of logistic task to get it everywhere so that's when we kind of thought Actually, if we could find somewhere that we can put it up, maybe for four weeks and just leave it somewhere. And then for smaller events, because I made the little ones, that only comes out about a foot high by five foot long. That's easier to transport. Yeah. We could take uh -huh. that about from place to place to let people see it. I mean, the, the plan would be the big ones we would take to the, the marches or we would get to the marches amongst us. It's, there's, a, there's a lot of people, everyone kind of chips in and does what they can. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. the, the stones started off well, one of the marches with a flag lying on the ground and Alison Brown, who set the page up, had made a wee sign saying, put your stones here, have a look, come back at four o'clock and collect one. And then 
Dennis Bell, one of the other stoners, because we do call ourselves stoners, to which my, my son says, you can't call yourself <laughs> stoners. Do you know what you're saying? I said, I'm well aware yeah, we what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> do you think we were born yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> um, but Dennis then made us a cairn and a dry stone dike, so we use them to put the oh. stones up, up on at the marches. and, and it, I mean, it's a real draw at the marches. Yes, it is. Your background, were you an artist? Did you train as an artist or have you just come to that? Because you're clearly very talented looking at your work. That's very kind of you. I enjoyed art. I did do higher art at school, but that's as far as I really? went. Although I've probably got some flatmates at university that said uh, uh, my displacement activity when I should have been studying for exams was, oh, I have to do this watercolour. <laughs> <laughs> so you've always been interested so it's in... It's just, it's just a hobby. It was a yeah. hobby. Uh -huh. um, and actually it was a form of therapy and yeah. giving something nice to people. They could always have like a wee stone at the front door that mm -hmm. just has got a salt yeah. tie on it yeah. or a wee thistle on it. It uh -huh. says yes. Um, I think I might make one for my mum's door. I think she would like that. So, <laughs> And what, what, what was really like nice it. was when we joined the, the Yes Stones page and you then go to Marches and then because of the care and you start meeting people and you mm -hmm. get to know people and you almost feel like, I found my people. Yeah. <laughs> That's found your tribe. Yeah. I've, no I've noticed that on the Facebook pages, there's a real sense of community there, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. Very much so. So, so if you got an idea about where the next you know, time it would be shown might be? Or? Well, the plan was to be our growth. Oh, right, March. now it's just been cancelled. But obviously that's it? been yeah. cancelled. Yeah. So it's now a case of... Uh, looking into places and and i did um, I, i've got a son that lives in dundee so i was up visiting him i catch up with my aunt who lives in monifeath and we go to the vna so i chanced my arm there and asked <laughs> how do you go about getting things displayed but they were a bit kind of when i mentioned scotland independence theme they were kind of like mm, maybe not yeah, up um, on the law hill in yeah, dundee um or the mcmanus uh, yeah mcmanus we that, yeah, yeah that's it so, uh, so it's now looking for places and saying right yeah when we start emailing them out saying yeah. have you got a space would you be interested in doing it i mean maybe the, the smith gallery in sterling um Round the base of the Robert the Bruce statue yeah. at Bannockburn. Wow. Particularly with yeah. this being the 700th anniversary of the Declaration of Our Both, you'd think they'd be looking. But then I suppose in some of these places have got to be very careful that well, they don't display political yeah. bias. Yeah. And I mean, the Bruce of Bannockburn, is that Scottish? Na is that National Trust for Scotland? Because you can't sure quite see no. them no. agreeing. The I might be doing them an injustice. <laughs> <laughs> How many other artists do you say were involved in the Slates project, um, Glenn? I think there was about 30 of us. Um, there's 42 Slates that make up uh -huh. the display, but, but some, some people have done more than one. Have done multiple yeah. ones. Um, I think I know somebody you know a little bit. Yeah, Walker McGowan, yes. yeah. yeah. We have a mutual friend, like my best pal, her husband, used to work with Walker. And I, I, I knew him years ago when he was only, I think he was like, he's quite a bit younger. I think he was kind of like the young boy about the office in those days, but we're talking about 30 years ago. So he was just a wee young guy then, but now he's a mature uh, artist. <laughs> I think they all worked in advertising together. Yeah, right. I think Walker was a, a graphic, or still is a graphic yes. artist. Yes, he yeah. is, um, uh -huh. And his his slates are amazing. Are um, what's been quite interesting is gra it, it grew very organically. When people came, it wasn't like we all got together and had a discussion and said, this is what we'll do, went away and didn't and came back. So people were putting in their, I've got an eye and I've got this, and, and sending so it's them, quite in, them in. And every time somebody sent one and you're like, oh, my God, how am I going to compete with that? So Not that so it's a really competition, yeah. but it's amazing, yeah, the yeah, talent yeah, out there. Yeah. and. What what Tina did, who kind of initiated the project, and we we pulled all the people together, was asked people to do a wee bio about themselves. Oh, that's a good idea. Whether it's your yeah. story towards independence, whether it's about your that's art. interesting. So, I've got that here with me, um, and it, for us again, you just you meet people and you become friends with them. And you're thinking, but I really don't know anything about them. But gradually, we're getting to know more and more about each other so, yeah. and finding our own stories to. Why are are we so you know positive about independence yeah. and it's the yeah. right thing to do? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you find out it's you know people's lived experiences that has, has pulled them in. 
You're involved in the stones, Fiona, but not the <coughs> slates. Is that right? Or I'm involved in. I did. I've done some stones, but nothing to the nothing to the standard that Lynn does. <laughs> yeah, but Fiona helps with her PR for the ah, slates. So yeah, but the um, the slates, I, I haven't done any of those. But I think they're absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to do one yet. Yes, because <laughs> that's the thing is we've done this. We've we've put it. Out, I mean. We'll, we're not separate to Yes yeah. Stones. We are part of Yes yeah. Stones, but we just—I actually set up a, a separate group just for people that are involved in this, just so we could contain it uh-huh. and keep it manageable, yeah. as you say. Um, but all the pictures have gone on to Yes Stones. We're not being exclusive mm-hmm. about yeah, yeah. it. It was yeah. just we can control that, and then yeah. we can say, "Here's what we've done," um, and there's nothing to stop other people. Um, you know, it might actually be—we have got quite a few learning points from this in that. It's lovely that we feel we've we come from across the length and breadth of the country. So Robert is up in Aberdeen, Tina's down in Gretna, um, Morag's in Oban, um, I, Rachel's in Pennycook. Mm-hmm. You know, I could go on naming oh, so they're all over all the over, country, all, yeah. all over Scotland. Yes, and we've managed to pull these together. And actually, one of the things that we're looking at doing is um, entering the John Byrne Award. Ah. Oh, that's interesting. So we're we're, we're in in the, the middle of kind of putting together that, an application, that, an application for that. For that's that fantastic. Time to enter yeah. the John Byrne Award yeah. as well. So we'll take some. Fo- well, I think you've already taken photographs. Some if you know of, you've kindly brought some through, and we'll take some pictures and we'll put them yeah. in our chat. Room. So yeah. um, we're not precious about our artwork. We'll, we'll put it, and people say, "Oh, that's great! I, could I try that?" And you go, "Yeah, try course, it," because yeah. the whole the whole sort of raison d'etre is that we're sending out a message, we're starting conversations in a non-confrontational way so somebody finds a stone we don't know what happens to all the stones some of them may get chucked in rivers chucked in hedges but lots of them we do see people who find them and that's how the page has now grown the group's now grown to 7,000 people because people have found it most of them have Facebook yes stones written on the back so they come on to the group and then they see about it, and then and once they're bitten they, by the bug, oh, <laughs> isn't that isn't it that is just a so fantastic addictive. mixture of old style, you know, how to do yes. things, kind of linking yeah. up with new style, how That's to kind true. of keep in touch. And as you said, it's a bit like a family, so you don't want to be precious about it. Anyone wants to use ideas, that's great. And now we're going to drop in on Finn and family in Tillicoutry and see how they're getting on with their lockdown diaries. Here's Finn. Good morning. It's 12th of February or something. And it's Finn here just giving some more thoughts on social distancing, social isolation and uh, the wee diaries that we're all lending to the, the podcast. I wanted to start off just by saying that I think it's good that Kath Calderwood is being held accountable for her behaviour. I'm equally disappointed that others aren't. But on the NHS, it's interesting, My there's quite a few folk out on my streets doing the Thursday night applause, um, although I know there's very mixed feelings about that and, and people really preferring proper funding for the NHS, social care and uh, anyone involved in care, including folk that care for a relative, rather than... Um, uh, clapping, which I totally understand, but it's making me think a wee bit of um, the closest I've got to this is the times I've been involved in dealing with flu season in hospitals as part of the staff, and um, it just brings back to me times that at some point it reaches a stage where um, discharge teams have a lull, and the lull is simply because demand and supply have just reached a plateau. There's nowhere for folks to be discharged to because all the previous ones before them have been discharged to those places and are either stuck there for whatever reason or too unwell to move on. Um, and yet there's still people coming in to the hospitals and then in treatment and then to be discharged afterwards. So then it kind of reaches a, a, a lull where actually folk aren't doing a great deal um, and certainly not phoning up for care packages because it's just exhausted the resources that are out there and there's almost an odd kind of eerie calm that comes over because you still want to be doing the best job that you can you still want to be there for each individual you know everybody comes to you with their 
with their own story, their own personality, and you just become um, stuck until the, the cog starts whirring again. But it's, it's going to be interesting to see um, how these sort of peaks and troughs and lulls and plateaus happen over the next while. Obviously, what we're talking about, I mean, it's our growth, the declaration of our growth, the significant anniversary. Um, I've watched the Leslie Riddick video and um, and the kids were suitably unimpressed for their age group. Uh, myself and the half were far more interested, learned several new things as well. I'd certainly recommend that to anybody who doesn't know very much. I mean, it's not particularly in-depth, but it gives you a nice range of opinions on the the value or the impact that the the document and the the discussions around the time of the document and discussions since uh, particularly about liberty and rights that have uh, that have come afterwards but shortly after that i read i was reading travels with a kilt blog which is available to anybody to to read it and it was a, a sort of take on uh, examining Scottishness and what Scottish means, which you know, to a new Scot like me, is just very interesting. On the uh, the out on the walks that we've taken um, outdoors for our daily exercise, I have noticed that up here people do tend to say um, hello on walks, even if you're you know trying to keep your distance right across the way at the moment. There's a, a wee nod, a wee smile, just a little eye contact, if not an actual hello. Uh, yesterday, in fact, there was a family behind us. Uh, my two were on their bikes and they were doing racing on the cycle path. Um, and just to let our kids have a bit more space to do that, the other family had, had held back a wee bit. But, they, you know, they weren't looking at all put out. It was uh, it, it was almost that kind of thing that seems to be happening to folk when we, when we do actually pass them, is there's this almost slowing down of... Things. There isn't the same urgency that was happening before. It's sort of a, right, fine, let's take things in our stride. Let's appreciate the, the bird song. Let's appreciate the time that we're having with our families because actually we've talked a lot before about how circumstances mean that we can't have the family time we want to have. It's a real struggle, you know, with work, obviously. You still have a struggle and you have to come to a different arrangement at home about how your home becomes your workplace if it hasn't been your workplace before or if it's been your workplace before, but, but the, the kids have been out, um, if you have kids or your partner's been out, then that whole dynamic again of, you know, sharing a space with folk while you're actually trying to focus on uh, on other things. Um, but I have noticed that, that sort of slowing down and uh, when we've been on walks, it's been that thing of taking the little spur off the, wa- the walk that you normally know just to explore a wee bit further all those times that you said before that you'd, you'd go and explore a bit further I never did it's that it's those kind of explorations now um, finding out different things about the place that you you live in and the connections there there that you because everybody needs to connect it's just connecting in a different way but what I would say is with reference to Scottishness not necessarily our both but <laughs> Scottishness the thing that's tickled me this week is the uh, the back of the car meme that is uh, get after you wee spooky virus thingy. Um, I'm otherwise turning to illustration as ever, which is what I do anyway. But this week it's seen magic mushrooms for some reason. Been drawing some magic mushrooms in the house. We do have a friend who's a forager. I'm not sure if that's been something that's linked to that. But um, there's been some reading, again, a slowing down of things, taking time to read stuff. Um, and share it with the, the folk you're sharing a space with. Music sessions, this is mixed. I know parents out there understand this, very mixed. Music sessions with small children, where perhaps talent is not, not on the same par as uh, uh, you know your expectations, as their expectations. So, so long as you ditch all of your expectations and just make it a fun session, generally everybody comes out uninjured. I do draw the line at musicals in this house because there's a strong musical contingent and because they drive me nuts, I then plug into something else like, I don't know, Daft Punk or something while they're naffing on about the hills being alive or lame stuff. Yeah, that kind of... Mm. Anyway, definitely there for some people, just not for me. doesn't do it for me. And other stuff we've been doing is the rainbows theme has obviously been about, about putting a, a rainbow in your window. We've got um, three ready-great soul tires in our windows at the moment. Um, 
but a rainbow is coming up later, as is a bear. But we have seen quite a few rainbows on people's windows just when we were going past, which is a nice touch. And I always think it's a nice touch for, for Clack Manager because we tend to get more rainbows here than I've seen anywhere else. We're not long up to Clack Manager. We lived in we lived in several different parts of Scotland before, but Clack Manager is new to us. That's certainly, I think, a, a thing that really strikes me is the number of rainbows you get. But the thing about the rainbows is it is that symbol, isn't it? It's a symbol of many things, whether it's been LGBT um, or um, just that whole presence of colour that um, lends itself to all the children's type of material uh, that folk get. And it's meant to be uplifting. It's meant to give that um, impression of hope. And it's about that combination of the rain and the sun coming together. I, I really like looking at rainbows through kids' eyes because it, it is magical. It just does seem magical. Um, so seeing that image on people's windows as you go past is very uplifting and it's it's great to see people involved and again connecting in a in a different way um, through that. So if I can encourage anybody to, to do that themselves this week it would be to put a wee rainbow up or even you know uh, we've done rainbows in Lego I've seen some craft stuff online where you're, where you, you're using in, invisible ink techniques to bring your rainbow out so it becomes more of a play session. There's just so many ways you can do different colours of rainbow, even if you're just getting a, a group of clothes together and then making what you will of it with all the different colours that you have. Just just being creative and, and spending a bit of time just going, right, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? What else is it going to turn into? Which in itself can be an exciting journey. So those are the kind of musings we've got going on this week. Um, but I'm interested to hear what everybody else is doing as well. So listen, looking forward to hearing some of the voices very shortly. Some of you might remember the interview I did with Kath Cooper of JCR Community a couple of podcasts ago. It was uh, episode 22, I think. And Kath was telling us about some very ambitious and intriguing plans that she had to bring wasteland and industrial land back into food production and setting urban farms in place. Well, interestingly, this week in The Guardian, I think it was, there was an article about Singapore, which I shared with Kath just for interest. There's some parallels between what she was thinking of doing and what Singapore are doing. Singapore have announced new plans to boost food production because they only produce around 10% of their own food, which seems extraordinarily low. But because of the restrictions on population movements, it's wreaking havoc on farming and food chain supplies. And they're getting concerned about shortages and price increases in Singapore. So they've announced new plans to boost food production and they're looking at turning car park rooftops into urban farms. And they're really trying to reinforce the importance of local food production. They're looking at vegetable seedlings at a rooftop hydroponics farm in an industrial estate. As if the pennies just dropped, local food production mitigates our reliance on imports and provides buffer in the event of food supply disruptions. And although it doesn't say so in the article, it also minimises the amount of transport that's being used that's chucking pollution into the atmosphere why it should just suddenly come as a surprise to people that oh what a good idea maybe we should grow food locally it's like we're having to relearn something that our ancestors have known from the minute they gave up hunter gathering and took to agriculture now whilst the authorities are assuring residents in singapore that they've got sufficient food supplies a panic buying has ensued um, they are looking at ramping up local production and they're looking at a $21 million grant to be provided to support the production of eggs, leafy vegetables and fish, as well as identifying alternative farming spaces such as vacant industrial sites. They're going to be next month launching a tender for rooftop farms on public housing car parks for urban farming. Now, wouldn't that be a great thing for the Scottish government to maybe do a bit more of? As it happens, my cousin lives in Singapore, so I'd forwarded him the article and what he had to say was that in Singapore, borders are closed to people. Of course, Singapore's had a much more stringent lockdown than, than is happening in the United Kingdom. Borders are closed to people, but not for food or goods. And of course, checks and controls add friction and make supply chains less efficient. 
But the other thing is the disruption in neighbouring countries to their own food production systems. And of course, the countries that Singapore imports from are also impacted. Up till three months ago, the decision about where to locate a factory or a farm was all about cost. Security of supply was not a factor, as more and more aspects of consumption were reassessed as non-strategic. So there you go. Interesting that we're having to learn these lessons as if from scratch. So perhaps the new normal will be a more locally based normal, less reliant on shipping foodstuffs around the globe, which I think would actually be quite a good thing. If anybody wants to listen again to the interview that we did with Kath, and it was a very, very interesting discussion, I thought. Episode 22, you'll get it on yescal.podbean.com, which is the podcast channel that all the all the Indie Live radio shows end up on. And given that there's a lot of people sitting around with time on their hands, if you know anybody who hasn't come across the Indie Live podcast channel or our podcast and you think would enjoy it, please do share it with them because it would be great to take the opportunity to build up a few more listeners. Speaking of shows, I'm sure you're all aware that we have a Sunday poetry and jazz show on Indie Live Radio, 1pm on a Sunday, followed by an hour of jazz, which has poems interspersed with it. And again, you can catch it on the uh, Podbean channel as well. Last week, we featured a poem from the multi-talented Lynn, who you've already heard from on this podcast. I'm going to finish with it this week because it celebrates all my fellow women for Indy and it's called Bellies of Fire. We're independent women of Clackman and Shire with hearts full of passion and bellies of fire spreading the word in our wee county sharing knowledge of Scotland's bounty determined to set our country free A land for you, a land for me. A land of endless opportunity for old, young, big and we. With Sinclair, McGregor, Sylvester, McCann. Artists abound in every clan. Painted stones with positive words, quietly making our voices heard. We've been held to ransom for far too long. Time to show that Scotland is strong. We're clever, inventive, rich and caring. With a bright future, it's there for sharing. Young folks, rise up. This land is for you. Old folks, you know what you have to do. Be brave, believe and hope, not fear. This is our independence year. We're independent women of Black Man and Shire, with hearts full of passion and bellies of fire. So as ever, thanks for listening and stay safe everybody and we'll catch you all next time. Bye now.